All right. So for DLR week 14, the first part, the first box asks us to put a check mark by the sentences with compound subjects. So remember in a complete sentence there are two main parts. There's the subject and the predicate. The subject tells you who or what or where the sentence is talking about. The predicate tells you about the subject, maybe something the subject did, or it might be describing the subject or how the subject is acting or behaving. When they want a sentence with a compound subject, what that means is they want a sentence that is talking about two or more things, usually two things for a compound subject. So a compound subject means that the sentence talking about two things or two people or two places, not just one. If we take a look at sentence number one, it says Santa and his elves make presents for children. This sentence does have a compound subject because they are talking about two things, or in this case, types of people, Santa and his elves. So sentence number one should have check mark. The sentence is not just about Santa, it's not just about the elves, it is about both of them. And we do get a little hint that there is a compound subject because they do use that conjunction and, letting us know that there are two things that they're trying to combine in the sentence. In this case, two subjects. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer lives at the North Pole. This sentence doesn't get a check because there's only subject. There's only one thing that that sentence is talking about. It's only talking about Rudolph. Nothing else. Prancer and Dancer are two of Santa's reindeer. Sentence number three should also get that check mark because it is talking about things or people. Prancer and Dancer. Again, we see that little hint. There is that junction and letting us know that they're trying to combine two subjects. The sentence is not just about Prancer. It's not just about Dancer. It's about both of them. Joey wants a video game and a remote controlled airplane. Sentence number four does not get a check mark. We've seen in sentence one and sentence three that the conjunction and can be a clue that there is a compound subject. Sentence number four also has the conjunction and, but this time they're not trying to combine two subjects. They're combining predicates because they're only talking about one person the whole time. They're just talking about Joey. Who wants a video game? Joey. Who wants a remote controlled airplane? Joey. The reason why they use the conjunction and is to show us that there are two things that Joey wants. The airplane and the video game. So don't put a check mark there just because it uses that conjunction and. Make sure it has to be a sentence that is talking about things or people or two places. If it's just talking about one, in case Joey, there's no check mark. The second part is talking about adverbs and verbs. Remember, verbs are, a lot of times they're action words, things that you can do, something that can happen. An adverb describes that action. So uh, let's say somebody is, um, is sweeping. 
time for them to clean or they have to clean up the, the house, their room, the kitchen, wherever they might be sweeping. So someone is sweeping. Sweeping is that verb. Tells us what they're doing. Now, if we said that they were, let's say someone, um, maybe it's their chore. And maybe they don't really like to do that chore. They don't really like having to clean up. So maybe they are sweeping angrily. Or they're sweeping uh, grumpily. Or maybe it's someone who uh, needs to finish their chore so they can do something they want. Like they want to go uh, play outside. But they can't until they finish their chores. So maybe they're sweeping really quickly because they want to finish so they can go outside. Words like quickly and grumpily and angrily, those are adverbs. They're not an action, but they're telling us about that action. How are they sweeping? They're sweeping angrily, or grumpily, or quickly. So adverbs describe an action. They tell us how someone is doing something. They might tell us uh, when, or they might tell us like um, how good of a job they're doing. If they, they're sweeping really well, or if they're sweeping like messily. Like sometimes people, because they don't want to clean or because they're they're going too fast, they might end up not doing a very good job. And maybe even though they swept, there might be still, you know, piles of dirt or dust on the floor. On sentence one, Santa merrily placed presents under the tree. Our verb is placed. That's the action. Something that someone did. Merrily is the adverb. It's telling us how that person did that. So in this case, Santa is placing or putting presents. How is he doing that? Merrily. Which means like happily. Not grumpy, not angry. He's not like throwing them or like smashing them under the tree. Placing them, he's placing them happily. Sentence two, the reindeer waited patiently on the roof. Waited is our verb, telling us what the reindeer is doing. Patiently, our adverb, that's telling us how the reindeer is waiting. We all know that sometimes when you're waiting for someone to do something or when you're waiting for something, sometimes you're waiting, but you know, you're tapping your foot or you're tapping your, your hand or your thumbs or your fingers against something like a desk or a table or a countertop. And sometimes people are waiting, but they're waiting and they're going, <sighs> <sighs> Mm. And we know that even though they're waiting, they're not doing a great job of waiting. Maybe they're really excited or they're really um, anxious to, to start whatever is coming up or whatever is coming next. But if someone is waiting patiently, they're not sitting there and tapping their foot or tapping their hand or their fingers. They're not going to sigh or make noises or look at you really angry like, why aren't you hurrying? Waiting patiently means that they're just standing there. They're not trying to hurry anybody up. And kind of like, um, I guess, waiting for their turn or waiting for the next thing to happen. But without trying to hurry anyone up, without being frustrated or angry about it or, or anything. Number three, the children slept soundly in their beds. Slept is our verb. It's telling us what the children were doing. Our adverb has to describe that. So how are the children sleeping? They're sleeping soundly. Now I know that this has like the word sound in it, but soundly doesn't actually mean like they're making noise or anything like that. Soundly is talking about 
basically that they're they're having a very good sleep they're not you know tossing and turning or flipping over they're not waking up all the time that it's a, a very good very deep very restful sleep And sentence four, James secretly tried to stay awake and wait. But what is James doing? Well, he tried to stay awake. This one we could stretch it out a little bit. Tried to stay awake, but even if you don't just have it under tried, that's perfectly fine. That's what he's doing. He's trying. How is he trying? He's trying secretly so even though he's trying to stay awake it's not uh, very obvious that he is or he's trying not to be obvious that he's staying awake so he might be laying down in his bed he might be covered up maybe he's you know turned on his side or curled up or however he sleeps but really he's trying to keep himself from going, trying to make sure that he stays awake he just doesn't want anyone to. Right? Our sentence. This sentence has a stakes in it. Last Christmas, we sing songs with our family. Like I said, because we already kind of covered this, I don't need you to remember, but we'll look at it like it's brand new. What is a mistake in this sentence? Something that they left that shouldn't be here. Kylie? Okay, so sing should be sang. If this is something that already happened, it shouldn't be. It is last Christmas. What is something else that needs to be fixed? Bailey. Okay, the C in Christmas needs to be capitalized. If it's a name, like in this case, the name of a holiday, it should be capitalized. Jadeen. There can be, but in this sentence, we don't need it. If I put the apostrophe S, so if I put an apostrophe right here, there's two reasons why I would do that. Number one, something belongs to the family. Or number two, I'm trying to say family is or family was. But look at where the word families is in the sentence at the very end if it's at the very end then there's nothing after it right there's no more words in that sentence so nothing can belong to my family if there's no more words in the sentence then i don't need family is or family was if i try reading the sentence and saying that we'll see it doesn't really make sense it sounds like you stopped in the middle of something Last Christmas, we sang songs with our family is. So if I try saying family is or family was, that wouldn't help. It's not correct. If it's at the end of the sentence, I don't need the apostrophe. There is something wrong with the word family. So it's not okay. There's something going on here. But I don't need the apostrophe. Kylie? It's the spelling. So how should I spell it? Very good. If I want to fix families, if it's just one family, then it's just with the Y, no S. But once there's more than one family, I can't just have Y, S. 
I need to change it. So like Kylie said, I need to spell it F A M I L I S. If there is a consonant like this L in front of the Y, it has to be I E S at the end. Okay. There's still a few mistakes. Jaylene? I need a period at the end. There always needs to be some kind of punctuation at the end of my sentences. And usually, it's going to be a period, unless I'm asking a question or it's something really exciting or surprising. In this case, it's not really surprising. I'm not asking anything. So, I need to use a period at the end. Christopher? We already said that, but you're right. Sing needs to be sang because it needs to be past tense. Kylie? We didn't say to capitalize the L in Latin, but why do I need to capitalize? The first word of the sentence always needs to be capitalized. Okay? Still a few mistakes. Bradley? Yes. Nope. Not get rid of the S in families. We do we did change the spelling of it. But if it's a Y in front of the S, you do have to spell it a little bit differently because of that con because of the S. So we changed sing. We changed the spelling of family. Capitalized last, we capitalized Christmas, we put a period at the end. What else? There's two more mistakes. Both of the, of the mistakes that are left are both punctuation mistakes. They have to do with marks that are either there and we need to get rid of them or they're not there. Bailey, see another mistake? Me? No, Bailey. It's okay. Quotation marks are when there's two. If it's one, it's an apostrophe. So this is an apostrophe. Okay. No, so like I said, Bailey, this is an apostrophe. Quotation marks have two of them. They'll be right next to each other. Let me show you what that would look like. Quotation marks would look like this. There'd be two of them. Oh, well, if you're going to make it two sentences, it would be a period. But we don't need a period there. But what are you trying to do? Okay. Who can tell me? Jadine? Between. You're right. The word songs doesn't need an apostrophe. Nothing belongs to the song, and it's not song is or song was. There's still one last punctuation mistake. Something else is wrong with the song. Kylie?
you're right, it's a comma, but that's not the place for it. It's not between songs and with. So remember, a comma's job is to keep two things separate so it's easier to understand. So there is a comma, or there needs to be a, sorry, there needs to be a comma somewhere, but it's not there. Nakai, do you think you see where the comma needs to go? You're close. After Christmas. I need to put the comma after last Christmas because this last Christmas tells me when everything else is happening. If I got rid of this, the sentence would still make sense. We sang songs with our family. That's still completely okay. So last Christmas is like extra information that I have. I need to separate it from the rest of my sentence because if I don't, people might wonder what Christmas we is. If I separate it, then they know last Christmas is when, and this is what we did at that time. So capital, last, capital, Christmas, comma, we sang songs with our families, period. Okay, next part has us looking at some sentences and the sentences have choices. In each sentence, we need to choose which word is correct, which word actually belongs in that sentence. The boys restroom. They want us to circle one of these two. They're boys, B-O-Y-S apostrophe, or B-O-Y apostrophe S. So this is similar to that discussion we had about the songs. Where does the apostrophe? In this case, we know that it's for possession, something that belongs to the boy. But the question is, does it belong to boys more than one? Or does it belong to boy, just one? Christopher? It's more than one. If it's the boy's restroom, it's not just the restroom for one boy and all the other boys have to go. So... I need to circle the first one. The apostrophe needs to go at the end. So that way, if I look in front of the apostrophe, I find the word more than one. The teacher's lunchroom. Again, we have that choice, teachers or teachers. So either P-E-A-C-H-E-R apostrophe S or P-E-A-C-H. E-R-S apostrophe. Again, we have to ask ourselves, does the lunchroom belong to just one teacher, like what's in front of the apostrophe here, or does it belong to more than one? Shading? Okay, so I need the apostrophe to be at the end because you're right. The lunchroom belongs to all the teachers. It's not just one. The girl's jacket. So we have girls, girls, either G-I-R-L-S apostrophe or G-I-R-L apostrophe. We have to ask ourselves, does the jacket belong to more than one girl 
Or does the jacket belong to just one girl? Kylie? It belongs to only one girl. I think it'd be kind of hard for like two or three girls to wear the same jacket at the same time. Or it'd have to be a really big jacket. So if it's one jacket, it probably belongs to one girl. If it was like a whole pile of jackets, then yeah, it could belong to a bunch of different girls, right? But in this case, it's just one girl. All the customers' cars. Customers and customers. C U S T O M E R apostrophe S or C U S T O M E R S apostrophe. Do the cars belong to one customer? What's in front of the apostrophe here? Or do the cars belong to more than one customer. What's in front of the apostrophe here? Alexa? More than one customer. It does say all the customer cars. So there's probably more than one customer. Last part of the Monday page. What change is needed, if any? Need to look at this sentence and see if we can find fake. Will we go to grandma's house and mom's car or dad's? A says to change grandma's to grandma. I don't hear a difference, but if I look carefully, I can see a difference. What are they changing? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, hang on. What are they changing for answer choice A? The capitals. They want to go from a capital grandma to a lowercase grandma. So before we talk about the answer, Nikai, I want to make sure we check all the answers. Sometimes if we look really quickly, I see one answer choice and I think that's got to be it. But a lot of these, there might be some trick answer choice. I want to make sure I check all the answer choices before I look for an answer. B, change moms to mom. And again, I don't hear a difference, but if I look carefully, I can see a difference. What change are they trying to make in answer choice B? Change moms to mom. See the change again, Nikai? What change are they making? Capital again. So they're changing from a capital moms to a lowercase mom. Change the period to a question mark. So they think that the way to end the sentence is not with the period, but question mark. They think there's a question happening. And D says to make no change. That the sentence is fine. It is perfect the way that it is. So Nakai, you said you thought you know the answer. So which one did you pick, or which one do you think is the best? Number Okay, letter C. Why letter C? Okay, they're asking a question. Whose car are we going to take? Are we going to take mom's car or dad's car? And if you're asking a question, you definitely need to end that sentence with a question mark. Otherwise, it's just a statement. You're just saying something. So here is the whole page with all the correct answers. Make sure that your page matches mine. That we have all the correct answers.